my two phones oh look at this i need this to work out ah instagram hey everybody this is modessa megan boguni i'm trying out a little trick here and i have a feeling that i might i might lose out with instagram come on come on work with me work with me work with me so listen you're looking at my closet modessa why are you showing us your closet well because i'm selling my african wear and so <laughs> to me it's product placement so all these clothes have got to go but this is not what today's session is about so if you've never heard from me you've never seen me you don't know who i am my name is modesta mahigan Baguni, and i'm many a things but in summary i'm a management consultant and executive coach and i have been doing this program purpose and excellence which is now purpose and excellence academy yay and what i am coming with is saying look you are made of wonders you are going to accomplish great things whether it be in your business or it be in your in your career but you might find yourself yo-yoing you might you know sometimes second guess yourself i just had conversations with two people that just signed up to the master plan class yes i'm talking i'm going to talk about the master plan class as well and they were completely defeated in the area, one in the career, the other one in business. And they felt that they needed this program because they had a defect. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, there was nothing wrong with them, but they were working on assumptions which taken to the market couldn't check out. And so I today want to come with something honestly, honestly, honestly. So, okay, guys clothes box i will ship to you using that box so get past the clothes and get back to me what i'm sharing today i had to sit down for this one is it you get this i'm actually going to write a book based on this god help me i always announce my stuff out there and i get myself in trouble i need to get this book out the book based on what i'm going to teach today out on january 1st so help me january 1st this book is going to come out it is called i won't tell you just you go get that name before me but point is what i'm sharing today this is all you need and i came to this conclusion i, I you know I might, I might go a little windy today sharing a couple of stories but this is solid you're going to enjoy this so if you can i'd be grateful if you could share this far and wide i won't dare touch these phones if you could see how i've propped these phones because I'm, I'm, I'm working on phones one is being clamped and so it's secure the other one is like perched behind the other one so i can't even see you instagram i pray that you can see me and i look fine uh but i, I can't even risk the touch that you know uh, touching that phone so this is it i recently had a conversation and it was just this week with someone so this is someone else other than hey everybody hi james hey gloria hi faith hi hadija hi abdullahi hey hassan hi uncle asa and many other people so i recently had a conversation with someone and i told them that on the 16th of september i came to a crossroads i had to choose either to go one route and that would form the basis of my direction and i'm not even talking about career choices i'm just talking about mindset or go another now whichever way i went for the next 40 days i would be intensely studying and growing and and challenging myself in that area but before you start anything right you want to cut the cost i mean you don't want to get into a thing and then later you're like what why did i even um, and so I was counting the cost from the very beginning and I said, okay, if I go this one round and I hit it with everything I have, I may hit my issues at the time, but what if nothing comes of it? And if I go this other route, which had never been before, not earnestly, I had not been before which I sensed was the route that I should really take. Then not only were my present challenges going to be addressed, but all the challenges I would ever have, because what I would have learned would be like the truth, the foundation, the principles on which I could base every single thing that I wanted to do thereafter. So I chose not to go the familiar route, which I have done before and I've seen 
temporary answers and I chose instead to go a route that I hadn't before which was risky because I don't know if I was going to get it right or not um, but I sensed deep down that if I went that route that would sort it out forever and this is this is what in a nutshell I can't tell you about the specifics but I was telling someone about it this week that I had to I came to a crossroads and I had to either go you know on the familiar route of trying to I'm looking for my page trying to solve challenges a certain way which I had tried before to a certain level of success but then these challenges would keep coming back or go this other route which I had never tried before but I figured was going to make all the difference in my life you know what that's what that light is this light is supposed to be on my face but this light is like pointing upwards uh, Ignore the light beaming on my ceiling and ignore the box by the clothes. But don't ignore the clothes because, like I said, I'm selling those clothes. So I need them all to go. So they're out there on display. I thought, no, this is killing two birds at once. So look at this entrepreneur. I'm talking to you. I'm coaching. Ha, ha, ha. I'm sharing things I've learned under fire. I kid you not, guys. This is why I can stand with any of the things that I say. I have been on fire with the things that I share with you. And so anybody question me, anybody test me, anybody like, Modesta, you know, can you put, you know, your mouth where your money is or your money where your mouth is or whatever the saying is. I'm like, yes, I can. Because everything I'm saying to you, I have lived through it the hard way. And there's some people right now watching. They're like, yep, been there, done that. I saw her fall flat on her face and get back up. So now listen, today, and I'm writing a book based on this. And by God's grace, I will release this book for the new year. I will tell you what the what the what the heading the title is but the subtitle is how to get and stay on top how to get on top and to stay on top this is what I've come to learn that you cannot wait so if you see my eyes darting is because Facebook is down here and Instagram is up there so I'm like this before the doing before you get yourself to a position where you're doing and moving and you're shaking there are some things that if you do not first settle within you, you go like this. Like you will try a little and then should things don't work out. You have this, what if, could it be, is it that? And you cannot afford, oh my goodness, I don't know how to emphasize this. Once you set out on a course, you cannot afford to second guess yourself, you cannot afford to blink, you cannot afford, uh, you know, to want to backtrack. I mean, I cannot even, this is like a single tunnel. Let's say you've dug deep down in some mine shaft. The only way to go is forward. You cannot backtrack. Now, how on earth, who on earth lives and does not backtrack? Who on earth lives never second guessing themselves, never wondering when things don't go right, could it be? I wonder if, had I really checked, isn't it that it could be? The only people that I know that could forge forward without backtracking, and I've learned this the hard way, because when life hits me, like the best of us, I ask myself, all right, could it be that I assumed that this was it? Could it be because I get excited about stuff? I signed myself up for something that wasn't ready for me or it wasn't for me. Could it be that I'm actually maybe not the person who's supposed to be doing this? Could it be that the investment wasn't enough? Could it be that I was wrong to do that? Could it be? Now the could it be's are the reason why we keep coming back. The could it be's is the reason why you might give up on your business or could it be might be the reason why you so second guess yourself, you go for another certification, come on now postgraduate degree I need some diploma I need something some certification somewhere because could it be could it be that I missed it somewhere and so what do we do we go for it a little bit then we come back like wait wait what, 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 what let me just wait could it be nice so could it be that waste time is a could it be that makes you second guess is a could it be that gets you out of the race before you know before you finish it is a could it be that you will hear the voices of others and you say they could be right. I mean, you can have all these people saying this. It could be. Maybe I'm not the right person. Maybe this is not the right time. Maybe not the right place. Maybe I didn't make enough of an investment. Maybe I wasn't serious enough. Maybe I wasn't qualified enough. I've been in a context where I was talking to someone about what I wanted to do for women and women executives, etc. And um, and she said, 
you don't even come across like a person who could speak to women executives. Like you need a lot of help yourself, you know, before you get there. And granted, you know, in many respects I did. Or another context where somebody, where somebody said, how come you're talking to us about success and all these things? What does your bank account look like? Like, you're not the person we should be taking advice. And I'm like, you know what? This dude's got a point. My bank account don't look like the stuff I'm saying to people. Could it be that I should wait a while? I should wait till I have more accolades. Could it be that I should wait until my ching ching looks a little better than it does right now? Could it be that I'm not certified? Listen, let me give you a third example. And I know I've given this before. Where, you know, I'm standing there and I want to work with people and I want to help and I want to do all these things. And then somebody says, do you know that you are demon possessed? That blah, blah. I kid you not, guys, I'm not making this stuff up. And I was like, you know what? What do I know about spiritual things? I could be possessed. Every altar call for my Christian people who understand this. Like I would be going there. I'm like, I am a demon. I have spirits. I need them. Take it up. I'm like, we don't see no spirits. Like, there's spirits. There's spirits. I stole their spirits. And so this second guessing, this, could it be? Maybe they're right. Maybe there was. Maybe, I wonder if, let me, let me check. So maybe I started this business too soon. Maybe this is not the market for me. Maybe I, I didn't make my, my, in, enough of an investment. Maybe I wasn't supposed to start a loan. Maybe I should have done this in partnership. These maybes get you taking a couple of steps forward and 50 million steps back and you keep doing this. And maybe you, you incrementally slowly get there and you're thinking maybe I should just incrementally slowly get there um, and, and, and that's you know part of the plan but you're, you're not really allowing yourself to really unleash and to go out. And I wanted to address that. Because on the 16th of September, I came to a crossroads and this morning, I came to a crossroads with this issue and I decided that's it. I'll give you another example. Somebody sent me a video of somebody I totally, I totally, my, my cousin Susie was like, demon possessed, totally finished me. Hey, Mac, hey, it's happened, me. There's not a thing that a human being has been accused and I haven't been accused of, but it's fine. So somebody sent me this video of somebody I completely love and then this is what I do, my people. And let me say this to you because I offended someone else this week when I said, look, this is not healthy. I, I, I will just, I will look at the, the title, the headline, and I'm not going to, I'm not going to open articles or videos people send me that are just, they just want my opinion for the sake of opinion that I may be looking down on one group, one religion, or just, I, I, I don't, I don't do petty things. I'm sorry. And so somebody sent me something and it wasn't a petty topic and it certainly wasn't from a petty person. It was an amazing person who I also follow. But I said, listen, I'm not going to, I'm not going to watch that video. He says, why? Why won't you watch it? You know, like this is, it's good to know his take on this topic. I said, this is why I'm not watching. And I truly to this day, I haven't watched it. And I know it was going to be something great. Thank you so much, Suze. I'm in House of Divas. Nice. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. She shared in her group. That's her own space. This is beautiful. Thank you for your generosity. And so, um, I said, I'm not going to, I'm not going to watch it. And he says, don't you want to know his take? You know, because it's a person we both follow, the person we both respect. Don't you want to know his take on this topic? And I said, I don't, I don't want to know his take. I don't want to know the school of thought on this and the other's opinion of that because there's certain things you got to catch this guys. This is what this entire topic today is about. And this is what this book I'm going to release on the 1st of January is about. I decided on the 16th of September, 2019. And this morning when again, I had thoughts of, could it be? I decided that there are some things that I know. And I know like I know like I know there's some things that I know. And for those things that I know, I will not entertain opinion. I will not entertain anything else to question my foundation. Somebody who said, Modesta, isn't that narrow minded? Like, oh, I said this, I know for sure. It's, I'm just going to continue with life with that. Yep, it is narrow minded, but it stabilizes me. It keeps me safe. It keeps me secure. For instance, I know that my name is Modesta Lillian Mahiga. And after I got married, Modesta, my name is Modesta Lillian Bogoni, officially, actually, or Modesta Mahiga Bogoni. I know I am Modesta, you can't take that away from me. 
I know Janet Benet is my mother. For sure, you can't take that away from me. I know Augustine Philip Mahiga is my father. You can't take that away from me, even if you wanted to. There are a couple of things that I know. I know that Mahando, Mahando is my, did I call my dad? Yeah, I did call him Augustine Philip Mahiga. And my husband is Mahando Philemon Bugun. I thought I called my dad uh, Augustine Philemon Mahiga. Mahando Philemon Bruni is my husband. I know I am married. I know I have every intention of getting married till death was part or Jesus comes for us. And I always joke, I'm like, and that death will not be mine because I ain't going nowhere. So there's some things I know and I have established. Which then means whatever happens, for instance, if I were to take my, my marriage, there is no divorce. There is no separation. There is no... That's just a thing that I had established. That's a thing I had set my mind on. It is what it is. Which means come what may, these things will just have to sort themselves out. We will do what we do if they're strategizing, whatever, because that is settled. I know that I am a born again Christian and Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. Settled, settled, settled. I am not going to entertain anything except the fact that I am the righteousness of God. And now I'm about getting into the topic. There are some things that if you do not settle, like just it is set, look, I'm not going to have a conversation about it. If you don't settle them, the winds of life will come and say, are you sure? Did you say, have you noticed? Are you still of the thought? Are you still about, and I can't even entertain that conversation because as soon as I hear that, didn't really, was that? And you're like, wait, I, I don't, I'm not sure. Just wait, okay, I'll get back to you. If you tell me a story about my husband, I'm not gonna entertain it. I don't think he'll do that. I don't see him doing that. And even if he did it, he will have to sort himself out because I ain't going nowhere. I am settled. And so listen, listen, listen. There's some fundamentals. I finally get it. I finally get it. And it has come under fire. And I am still under fire. Like I cannot explain how I'm being refined at the moment. But these things, these things, you get these and no one will ever move you in whatever it is you endeavor to do. You get these, and listen, do not entertain conversation. Once you get these things I'm about to share now, do not entertain conversation about that. Because that should be settled. Any conversation you have after that is to build on top of that. But not to go back to the basics. You cannot ask me whether my name is Modessa. You cannot ask me whether my mother is my mother, my father is my father. You cannot ask me if this is my husband and whether I'm going to stay in marriage or not. I mean, there's some things I have settled. You cannot ask me whether I would change religion. You cannot ask me whether, you know, I'm born again and whether I'm the righteous, whether I'm going to heaven or hell. You, there's some things I just know. And you're like, yeah, but you, don't you want to have a conversation? I don't want to have a conversation. So this is it. This is for everybody. Now, you know, guys, don't, don't, don't get one up me talking about my God because my God will come up every time. But this is for everybody in every context. And I know I'm mostly speaking about business. I'm mostly speaking about career. But hear me out. This is for you in everything. No one will ever steal where you're going. No one will, will slow down your speed. No one will make you second guess. No one will make you backtrack. No one will make you try to get somebody else for affirmation, validation, or any other Asian. Come here. Number one. Origin. I told you I'll be sharing a lot of stories. I was on a bus, wanted to go somewhere, caught the bus going in the opposite direction. So I'm like, wait a second, the scenery doesn't kind of look like where I'm going. So I asked, I said, listen, I'm trying to go to like, oh, wow, dang. Sorry, you, you know, you took it on the wrong side of the road. I'm like, oh, nice. So how do I get off? It's like, I wouldn't advise you to get off here because it was by an industrial area. So wait until we get to blah, blah, blah. This person explained to me where we go. And then he goes, but where are you from? <laughs> you know, like, now you're going to get stuck out here. I'm like, well, I'm from, you know, Tanzania and it's Africa. And he goes, man, you have a flag. And I said, I have a flag? What does that mean? He said, you have a country. You know where you come from. And I'm talking about this gentleman on the bus who's from the States. And he says, yeah, we're black. We know we're from Africa, but as far back as we can trace, we still find ourselves here. We don't know where we originally came from. 
we don't have, you know, let's say, you know, this is my family and this is where I can go to. You know your origin, which means you have a country, you have a flag. There is nothing like knowing where you come from. So that is number one. You need to know, like you know, like you know where it is you come from. Now, I could talk about where I come from. Actually, I went on a trip. I have a lot of stories today. When I was 18, so you guys may know I was raised by my mother and not my father. So when I was 18, I gone on a bus from Dar es Salaam to Iringa. I went all the way to Tosa Maganga in, in Iringa. I went all the way to Lupalama. Oh, my network is low. Oh, connection is bad. And I showed up. I said, I'm so-and-so's you know, child and I'm grateful to God. I've got my grandmother's name. So, and that was her house. So they're like, oh yeah, but that's the... And I, found, I saw where I came from. I saw it and I'd been there when I was little. So I saw where my father came from, which is, you know, where my family came from, because I know my mother's side of the family. And in a way you could say I got my origin. And so you can't take that away from me. I come from Lupalama, Tosmaganga, Iringa, you know, and I know that before that, you know, the, you know, the family had immigrated from somewhere else, but that is where the family was established. And it's good to know your origin. But another origin that I know for sure is I know I was created by God. I'm a child of God. Like you cannot take that away from me no matter what. I can't take that away from me on my worst days and my worst performance and my worst icky like mess I made in life. That can't be taken away from me. So that, you need to know where you come from. You got your origin set, you're done. I know like I know like I know. This is why you hear a lot of people say, don't forget where you came from. No matter what happens in life, don't forget where you came from. Don't forget what you've, you've been through. Don't forget your people. Don't forget. There is a grounding you get. Somebody says, I resemble my brother. Thank you. I love my brother. There is a grounding you get when you know where you come from. So origin is number one. Number two, oh, I can't wait. I can't wait for this book to come out. It's your identity. Now, this is where a lot of people hit me upside the head with my identity. So initially I had these tags. Initially it was, I am of a, you know, a single mother. Um, I, you know, not raised by a father. And that, that kind of got to me, you know, in terms of identity, I guess at some point, I think I got over it quick. Um, and then when I became a Christian, there was this question as to whether really I was born again. There was a question uh, as to whether really like God had accepted me. Like if you were to die today, you know how we, how we get. If you were to die today, are you sure you would go to heaven? I was like, God, am I making heaven? Will I make heaven? Will I not make heaven? I don't know. I don't know. Have I done the right things or whatever? You know, like when I got, you know, when I received Christ, they will receive him. And so I would also keep going to try to receive God over and over. Lord, you might have done a lot of work. But once I knew, I was like, wait a second, this thing comes by faith. You get Jesus by grace. I am in identity, the child of God. I'm a joint heir with Christ Jesus. When I leave this place, when I leave this suit, I go to heaven. Sorted identity, which means on my best day, I am a Christian. I am born again. I am born of God. I am seated here in the heavenlies with Christ Jesus. I am a core heir with Christ. On my worst day, like people are like, oh my goodness, Modesta. She's always talking to people about, you know, doing better, being better. Ah, oh, scandalous. On my worst day on earth, born again Christian, righteousness of God, seated in the heavens of Christ Jesus, far above it all. When you get your origin and your identity fixed, we can have those questions. Why am I talking about this stuff? Because these things come to your mind. Because there are times you're doing something, whether it's your business or your, your career, and you're trying to vie for something. And people are like, who are you? Who from Tosa Maganga have you heard of who's done this? How many Africans do you see doing that? Who from your family? Who of your age group? Who of your background? Who of your socioeconomic status? Like, there'll be all these questions, whether from others or yourself. I say, who am I at the end of the day? You better already have the answer. There's some questions life will ask to take you out. You better already know, and you know for sure. And so your origin, your identity. Number three, authority. 
Like I mentioned before, people are like, who? You want to speak to women executives? Who are you? What? You're talking to people about succeeding? Show us your bank account. Huh? You want to... Who? Like, wait, what qualifies you? And as long as you entertain those questions of who are you, like what qualification do you have? By what authority do you do that? If you do not already know by what authority. Somebody today said, Modesta, you handle so much. Somebody DM me. It's like, you handle so much. Like, how do you do all these things? How do you not get distracted? How do you know what to do and what not to do? I said, you know what? It is by the grace of God. You know, I had to say that because what am I going to say? God helps me do the things that I'm able to do. But the other thing is, I know who I am. I know what I'm here to do. I know what my values are. And I stand by that. That makes it so simple for me to say yes to the things I should say yes to in life and no to the things I should say no to in life. And so by what authority do I do this? I was reading and I've been meditating on this, on this verse. Um, uh, Isaiah chapter 61. And I'm reading, the spirit of the sovereign Lord is upon me, for he has called me, he has anointed me to preach good times to the poor. He has sent me. And I'm reading these things and I'm thinking, you know what, by what authority? God. God created me. God chose me. He ordained me. He called me. My purpose is to groom the leaders that are going to drive Africa's ascent to global economic lead. That's what I'm here to do. Africa is going to be the leading economic region in the world. My role is to groom the men and women that are going to lead that ascent. It's clear. Crystal clear. So who told you that? Who sent you to do that? Did your president send you to do that? Who asked you to do that? God asked me to do that. And that's settled. I, I can't even have a conversation about who are you to stand and be talking about grooming people in career and business? Who are you to talk to people about leaders? And who are you? I actually was asked that. Oh, so many stories are coming today. Um, a friend of mine who's now passed. I used to have programs on there. I mean, the, the programs continue on their, on their radio. And they said, the government came asking about you. And I said, about me? I was asking what? They said, who is behind you? And I told them, as far as we know, it's just her. She's the one who's grooming, you know, she's, she's speaking to youth, building them personal development in business and in, in their careers. It's just her, her and her companies and, and her colleagues. Yeah, but who is behind them? What is her motivation? They're asking on what authority? What gives her authority to take on these issues? What gives her authority to call herself this and to go out there and do? I had another incident where somebody wrote to me and said, I see that you've been invited to speak somewhere and it says minister. Since when are you a minister? Do you know that people go to Bible college and they go through all these things to be, to be ministers and you just give yourself a title? I saw this thing. I, was like, hmm. I forwarded it to the husband because I, you know, the husband is my mentor. And, and I said, is there a problem? Am I missing something? Like I just got this. And he said, no, just, just leave it. Just forget it. I was like, all right. I didn't call myself a minister. They called me a minister. By the way, Dr. Shalouid was like, when I came to your program a year or two ago. Um, and, I, and, I, and I was like, okay, so. But people will ask you on what authority. And if you don't have this settled in yourself before, you ask yourself, actually, wait a second. On what authority am I doing this? Hmm? You start a business. And, you know, somebody's like, oh, nice, cute. Who told you you could do that? Like, you know, you could be competitors in that business. Who are you to try to get into this market? Do you know what it takes to be in this market? And maybe that'll spook you out and you say, actually, who am I? Who am I to even think I could take on this market? Like, what am I thinking? You better know on what authority you're doing what you're doing. Or those questions, they will take you out. And so get that sorted as well. I, I have somebody who shared their, their testimony, the testimony of the master plan class today, and I'm going to share another one tomorrow. And, you know, they were talking about how they were not clear before and when challenges came it questions you when challenges come you're like am i the right person at the right place doing the right thing did i just send myself am i do i think too highly of myself and this is not relevant this is not um, appropriate and then you know after going through the master class thinking no wait a second i am the right person in the right place i'm not crazy to feel this way i'm not crazy to want to you know addresses challenges i'm not crazy to want to do the things i'm doing I, this is my thing you know somebody before in the masculine class said 
I, I, I reclaim my power. I got my power back. This is me. This is what I was put on earth to do. And there is such a peace. You'll keep hearing people say that. There is such a peace that comes with knowing on what authority do I have? I'm wired for this. I was created for this. This is why I'm going to step out and do this thing, whether it's in business or vying for promotion. When somebody says, you just arrived, I've been here. I mean, one of my other um, clients, she works under somebody who's taken 27 years to get where she, you know, she is. And that person is not about to allow her who's just, you know, waltzed in five years before to, you know, to, <laughs> to get into a higher role. And so in a way, she's like, she's sitting on her. Like, you're not going to move. Like, do you know what it takes to get up here? You're just going to show up after five years and try to get up here. So you better know on what authority you're doing what you want to do. Number four, accountability. I read something. It was Cornelius Lindsay. You can look him up on, on Facebook or on Instagram. So a couple of days ago, he posted that not everybody deserves a response from you. There's some people you give an explanation. There's some people, you know, maybe you respond. There's some people. He said, you can just look at them blankly. He said, my opinion is not part of your democracy. You're not entitled to hear me comment on things. You have an opinion about me? God bless you. You want to know? I'm, I, I don't have to answer to you. I don't have to explain myself to you. But you must know who you must be held accountable to because every human being must be held accountable. You must know who are the people over you, who are you know the authority, who are those that support you, who are those that stand with you. To them, you are accountable. To everybody else, not really. I will do the responsible thing. I will stand in my place, but I'm not accountable to explain to you. I'm not accountable to okay things by you. So I say this often. You think I'm doing a great job? I'm grateful. God bless you. You don't think I'm doing a good job? I'm grateful. God bless you. Either way, God bless you. And I will continue to do the thing that I'm doing. For those I'm accountable, I will answer to, starting with God. To the human beings that are over me, in the different areas that they're over me. Everybody else, so long. So also know who you're accountable to. And you're not accountable to everybody. As far as I am grateful that I have, you know, people that follow the programs and people that are interested and people that are, you know, enriched and people that will give feedback. But I'm not going to stop doing what I'm doing because, you know, just all of a sudden, maybe I'm not the flavor of the month. I'm not accountable to you. I sure must be responsible when I say I'm going to do a thing, to do the thing I've said I should do to you. You should expect that if, you know, I, I say a thing. You should expect that if I've taken your money for something, that I'm going to do that thing which I, you know, I purported to do, that I said I would do. But I am accountable to some and very few people about what I do in life. And that is something else. Today we're talking about how to get to the top and to stay at the top. Know who you are accountable to. Because if somebody shows up and gives you an opinion, you cannot let that cut you at the legs because people have an opinion. Somebody says you're a fake. Somebody says you're trying too hard. Somebody says, that's my territory. What are you doing here? Somebody says, I cannot help you. I'm not accountable to you. I want to give you this story. Not my story, another story. Uh, Moses in the Bible and the Israelites, they were getting on this man's last nerve. He's supposed to take them to the promised land. You guys know the story. And they were doing everything that people will do. Guys, leadership? Hmm. And he got to a point where he snapped and he just did a thing, you know, just out of his own thing. And God held him accountable. Now this guy could say, did you not see the pressure that I was going through? Did not see what these people were doing to me? Do not, do you do not see how I tried as best as I could to hold and not, but I was like, listen, you're the leader. I'm holding you accountable. You report to me. You have an issue with the people I sent you to. You talk to me. You don't go taking matters into your own hands. And so equally with you, you need to know who you are accountable to and you answer to them. Everybody else. God bless them. You need to see if you need to be able to categorize and decide who is worth hearing what, who is worth getting what, and nothing else. You better know this. If you want to get to the top, you will need this. You will know who you're accountable to and who you are not. And by God's grace, I'm grateful I have learned. Oh, my battery is going out.
Are we on? Please stay. Ah, it's back. My battery's always going on, so I need to move faster. Number five, position. Know what position you hold. So I'll, I'll give you, this is a very funny prayer type thing. So my husband and I went to our spiritual dad. Uh, he was visiting the area, so we went... And he's like, hey, how you guys doing? You're looking good. And we're just sharing, you know, some of the things we're going through. He goes, you know what? For some of the challenges you guys are going through, just know your rank. Just know who you are. There's no more extra prayer. There's no extra doing of anything. Just You just need to know your rank. And I absolutely love this. In Ephesians 1, 17 to 22, you hear of how, you know, Christ is seated high on the right hand of God above everything else. And you're seated with Christ, you know, in Christ as well on the right hand side of God. And that makes me, when I realized that position, and then I was, I was listening to uh, the book, um, The Confidence Code, you know, about women and how women can be confident. And when I was listening to that book, it was talking about altitudes, like talking about um, the, the former head of the IMF and the German uh, chancellor that, you know, these are women at, at a certain altitude. You also need to know the altitude you're at. So as a leader, you know, somebody else was speaking to this week. She was having such issues with someone. It was like, you know, like a like a male thing. Um, you know, she's the head. They're not happy. And this particular guy actually wanted that position, but she got promoted. And he was giving her a hard time. And so she's talking to me. You know, we're talking about her future, her focus, where she's going. And she keeps on coming back, talking about he said, and then he did. And he even had the audacity of saying that. And I'm like, this woman is not talking in a way that is befitting her position. She holds a very, very critical position to where the nation is going, the entire nation and where she's going, where the nation is going. Critical position. And what she is seeing is this man at work who is sabotaging her performance. And one of the things, it, it got to her so much that she wants to do extra courses, that she wants to prove to him and to her other colleagues, especially the male colleagues, that whoever appointed her, remember the issue of accountability, whoever appointed her didn't make a mistake. She's the right person at the right place. But her motivation was to prove to them. And I said, listen, do you realize how powerful you are? Do you realize how critical your position in this country and where it's going is? Do you even know what that seat you're sitting on represents in the country? I'm like, listen, and this is what I said and I was joking. I said, this guy, you've spoken about him enough. Let him rest. Let him have a weekend, okay? Because we've spoken about him so much. The guy's probably, but you know, we, we say it like to be, to be, um, like, it's so superstitious, you know. People say like, "I say, yeah, when I think like somebody's gonna bite them, they're probably biting themselves because you spoke, you speak about them so much." And so I said, "You know, this guy's probably bitten himself to bits right now. Can we not talk about him?" And then I elevated her in position. I removed her from talking about the challenges of this colleague, and instead I got her to think about. She got appointed to this position. She didn't ask for it. Secondly, this position is so critical to this organization and this organization is so critical to where the nation is going. And then I, told, I asked her to think about the, you know, the, the role the country has strategically um, in the region, the role the country has in what she's dealing with globally. I asked her to even go to LinkedIn and look at other people that hold similar positions, critical positions like that in government. You know, what they do and what, what that role requires of her. And as she was seeing what her position requires, just how strategic and pivotal it is to the entire nation and regions, Eastern and Southern Africa development, all of a sudden this guy, Mfumo Dume, that he was, he was discriminating against her because she's a woman and everything, this, the issues with this guy paled in comparison because she elevated that position she now assumed. And then I said, you're going to look at what that position requires. And then you're going to look at the types of people that hold that position. And then you take yourself up to that position. Because when she told me some of the things that she was speaking to about this guy, what he was challenging her with, and she was answering back, I said, a person of your position should never go back and forth with your subordinate like that. And I'm sorry for using the word subordinate, but I have to in this case to show the ranking. I said, you should not. You should not get in those petty conversations. You should not be there. You need to know your position. And I'll say this to you as well, whether in business, whether in your career, whatever it is that you're doing, even if it's about family, know your position. 
There's some things that you answer to, you speak, there's some things you don't. There's some things you deal with, there's some things you don't. There's certain altitude, there's some challenges. I'll, I'll give you this as a, little, as a little joke. We're watching something with my husband yesterday. And this, this, this cop was on a mission with this billionaire. And this cop says, listen, my per diem is $85. And so, you know, because, you know, that's like his lodging and that's his food and everything. But there is this guy who I get good deals from. Um, and so, you know, usually his place, you know, pays per hour and he can give us a good rate. And the billionaire, he's very diplomatic. He says, okay, I, I, I kind of usually try to... Um, Keep away from places that pay by the hour. How about I increase your per diem and we go to a more comfortable place? And my husband and I were laughing about this. Like they're talking, they're both talking about finding a place to sleep, a place to stay. But this guy's talking about what is a place that plays that pays per hour? Obviously, it's a place where you go, you do your business for an hour, and you leave. And so it's like, look, my per diem is only eighty-five dollars, and so I need to make it stretch. And he's like, nah, that won't be necessary. And so the billionaire is up here. He's like, what? Per diem, $85? Like, I'm a multi-billionaire. We can go stay wherever. I mean, we can, get, we can buy a hotel just to stay in one night. And this guy's like, yeah, I've got 85. I've got to make it stretch. And so you need to understand your position. There's some conversations you do not have at your position. When you are sure and you are settled about your position, you will not entertain any things that question you. Are you the right person? Should you be seated there? Are you sure you're deserving? And that's a non-issue. Whether I'm deserving to be here or not, whether I'm the right person, whether they chose right, that's neither here nor there. The fact is I am here, right? So let's deal with the business at hand. What is it that we have to do? Let's deal with that. Do not allow people to question you at the level of position. But all of these things I'm saying, you can only really address them or rather be grounded in them when you have established that in yourself, not when you're caught in the moment. When you're caught in the moment, people will slap you upside the head. But when you have that established in yourself, ah, conversations are neither here nor there when they're brought up. And then now I get to the things that I have been speaking about a lot. Number six, purpose. Why am I on earth? What did I come to do? Knowing what I came to do, I focus on doing what I came to do. You like the fact that I do that? Thank you. You don't like the fact that I do that? Thank you. You want to give me a lucrative offer? You're like, hey, Modessa, why don't you do this with me? It's got nothing to do with my purpose. I won't do it. Obviously, I'll, I'll you know, I'll be grateful and I'll speak. I will, you know, I, I will turn it down graciously. But I know who I am and where I'm supposed to be going. I'm not going to get distracted. And you need to know that as well. Not, I've started a business, but somebody just came and gave me this job offer to do this. This is, what do you think? Where's your heart? Where do you think? Yeah, I want to call this, but then this. Don't don't get twisted like that. One of my clients, we were doing so very well. She realized where she was. She was stuck in a rut. That that job wasn't getting her where she needed to go. It wasn't getting her in terms of career growth. It wasn't going to move her in terms of what she wanted to earn for her and her daughter to live well. But it was a very flexible job, like a government type job. And so we're like, all right, let's go. Let's let's look at you know. What, how long are we staying here and what is the strategy to move you out so that you can fulfill what you want to do in life? And somebody else came in and said, oh, but at the end of the day, nobody disturbs you. I mean, you're just comfortable and maybe you can hang out for a while. I'm like, uh, you know what? This person, for as long as she has other voices speaking to her, these sessions are the exception. She's not absorbing this. So what I, what I recommended to her is that she finds mentors, women that are moving and shaking things, women at that level, so that she can start thinking at that level. She can find her purpose and be able to see other people living in purpose for her to know, yes, I can. And anybody saying anything different is just a distraction. Number seven, values. Oh, this, when I got this revelation, my life changed forever. What are your non-negotiables in life? What are the values you stand on? No matter who comes wagging what, no matter who tells you to compromise for the meantime, no matter what says what, you stick to your values. You negotiate according to your values. You do business according to your values. You speak according to your values. You relate with people according to your values. You invest according to your values. You do what is best for you and your family because that is what you want to do. Not because he, she, he said, she said, not because everybody else does, not because we started out together. And what are your values? What are your non-negotiables? So one of the things is, I'm not going to tell you a pay range. I will tell you a figure. 
I'm not going to say like, yeah, you can pay me around. No, I'm going to tell you this is what this service is worth. And I can back it up. I'm not going to go into the details of how I got to that fee. But I will definitely show you how I can add value to you. So that you can see what my value proposition is. And you can see what you will get for working with me. And you actually will also see what you will be missing out. You need to know what your values are. If family is a value, then everything has to work around your family. If wealth is a value, then you cannot be doing things that take away from your wealth instead of building. If peace of mind is a value, you cannot be involved in gossip and in groups and in... Mm. If, you know, being able to enjoy life and travel is a value, then you cannot be cooped up in... I mean, these things are so simple once you sit down and you determine beforehand that listen i'm gonna get to the top and i'm gonna stay at the top and these are the these are the minimum foundation basic non-negotiables and you need to have them settled before a very fast talking person comes to you later in life number eight vision what do you see what are you here to do and what it, what will it look like after you have done it after you've done it successfully your vision will keep you focused your vision will tell you uh, you're not there yet. Your vision will tell you how far you have to go. Your vision will tell you if you need to grow yourself to fit into it. Your vision will tell you the kind of associations, the kind of partnerships you need, whether they're financial partnerships, whether they're strategic partnerships, whether they're partnerships in skills and competences, whether they're partnerships in geographic positioning. Your vision will tell you where you are going and what you need to build up to get there. I don't just take a course because I need a course. I take a course. Not because it's offered or it's in my field. I don't go by it because it's in my field. Because it's going to serve my vision. Because it's equipping me to get me there. So when you have vision that the day I am done with this, I can tell God, you can take me today because I've accomplished to the last detail what you put me on earth to do. You need to get to a point. You need to know what it looks like. That there'll be a day... When I know for sure and I tell God, I have accomplished to the last detail what you sent me to do. That means you know the details, right? That means you've written it down, you've made it plain. You know the details of what it is you've been called to do. And that is why you can boldly say, I'm done now. So you need to have a vision beforehand. What is it that I'm here to do? And what will it look like once I've done it successfully? So that you can measure where you go. So you can know who you're going with. So that you can check, do, what kind of wealth do I need to build to get there? What kind of network? What kind of accomplishments? Uh, what kind of learning do I need to do? Or what kind of partnerships? Um, you know, what kind of person do I need to be? What kind of character? My goodness, guys, I'm working on my character. It's not nice. But I have to. I have a lot of chinks in my arm. I have a lot of, you know, rough edges. Me, Modesta. And I need to work on my character for where I need to go. And I know I'll be doing it for the rest of my life, but it's, it's a real issue for me. You know, it, it, it's, a, it's a biggie. Sorry, I had to get uh, Instagram back up. It's a biggie for me. Then mission. So then how am I going to do about it? How am I going to go about it? This vision that I have and the, the vision of success, what it look like once I've done what God put me on earth to do. This vision of what I want to do, grooming African leaders, um, you know, to, to lead Africa's economic ascent. What will it look like once I've done that? My vision also informs, um, you know, the things that I do. Now, taking me to number nine, mission. It informs in what I do. So, you know, I've been coaching before that I was in consulting. Uh, and then now I've established Purpose and License Academy. And I'm, I'm, I'm growing that. And I'm going to have trained the trainers. I'm going to license out, you know, the, the services so that other people can carry this out. My network is only so big. But when I have franchisees, when I have licensed people, when I have trained the trainers, then other people can carry it forward. It's part of fulfilling my vision. I don't have to be the face of everything that I do. But I can be the person that started it. And so when you have vision, you're very clear. So people are like, Modessa, how do you get how do you stay so focused? Like, how do you know what to do and what not to do? How do you not get distracted? I've got vision. And it informs the mission that I'm supposed to be on. And my mission may change with seasons. So one season I was doing this and I was doing that. Then after that, I did this. Every decision I make, I don't just get up. Every decision I make has to be informed by the purpose I have in my life, the vision, the mission. I'm not wasting my time here. Enough. I refuse. I need to have certain things settled about who I am, where I'm going. And so you might come in, you're like, this is $5 million, Modesta. Like, drop that and do this. No, I won't. I know where I'm, where I'm going. That $5 million, I'll make that a hundredfold if I stick to what I'm doing. Because that's what I'm supposed to do. And what I was called to do is where my wealth is at as well. Number 10, focus. And when I say focus, I mean long-term focus. 
different. This vision, like you need to know what it is you're here to do and the fact that, you know, and, and to also know what it looked like when you're done. Focus is to say, then keep your eyes on the vision. Keep your eyes on what it is you came here to do. And this is how I do. So when I have long-term focus, I actually saw something that Tony um, Elumelu put today. I, 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 I saw it in passing, but I need to go back to it. And so if you follow him as well, go look at what he wrote today. But when you have vision, when you're focused long-term on what it is you need to accomplish, whatever happens today is just the motions. You're in transit. You know you're transitioning. You know it's the, it's, it's, it's the birth pangs of bringing a thing to, to, to fruition. It is just, it's just the vicissitudes of life. Life happens. Life happening doesn't, I mean, my kid acts up. I'm not going to throw her out. You know, I have an argument with my husband. I'm not going to get a divorce. You know, I, I have some prayers that I feel like they're not answered and not in my time. And what, I'm going to abandon being a Christian now? I don't want to follow you anymore. Jesus Christ, you're not answering my, my needs. What? No, you, you need to have long-term vision. If this is where I need to go long-term, no matter what happens right now, I will just have to recalibrate route. I will just have to reposition. I will just have to realign whatever needs to be done so that I can reach my long-term vision. All of these put together, let me just say them again real quick. Your origin, identity, authority, accountability, position, purpose, values, vision, mission, focus, long-term focus. All of this put together. When you have deliberated on this, when you've thought about this, when you have written them down, when you have set your mind to this. Because I've had some things come in my life that question me. Are you sure you want to continue the way you want to continue? There's some things that question me. Are you sure you're still following? Are you sure you're still staying with? Are you sure? And I'm telling you, everything in my life is pointed to, no, I'm not sure. Actually, staying this route is costing me. Actually, aligning with him is costing me. Actually, going this way is slowing me down. When everything around me is screaming, get out, get out, get out. I quiet myself and then I go back. What do I know like I know like I know? What do I know? I know my origin, I know my identity, I know my authority, I know who I'm accountable to, I know my position, I know the purpose over my life, I know my values, I know my vision, I know my mission, and I have a long-term focus. I am staying. Do or die, this is where you will find me until Jesus calls me home. And you need to know that, whether it is for you in your life, whether it is for your marriage, whether it is for your business, whether it is for your career, whether it is in your leadership, whatever it is, whether it's ministry, whatever it is, there's some things that need to be established as non-negotiables. You need to be established in these things. Being set on this will get you to the top. Remaining set in this will have you stay at the top. Do not entertain conversation. I do not know how to emphasize this more because I've learned it the hard way. And the first conversation starts in your own mind. Do not allow yourself to second guess whether this is right, whether you are the right person, the right place, doing the right thing. Do not allow those thoughts in your mind. Do not allow, I mean, there's some self-assessment reflections I don't even do. Just even going through those exercises is to make me question, second guess myself. I mean, guys, when you, for, for a broad-minded person, you might think I'm actually very narrow-minded. There's some things I won't do at all. I need to be set in something. Not everything is up for philosophical existentialist questioning. Not everything is up for, I wonder, but let me check. There's a new method of checking. There's another way of evaluating. Have I actually thought this through? Have I asked them? I mean, I've been asking people. I've been, I've been you know, I love learning. But it got to a point where I, I just needed to establish a couple of things. I needed to just decide for that which I know I know. I know who I am. I know why I'm here. I know why I'm here, where I'm going, what I'm supposed to do, for whom. Have those established. Then do the things that are aligned with that. You won't second guess yourself with that. You won't start a business and stop. You won't wonder if you're, you're qualified. You won't wonder if you should go get one more opinion before you give yourself the permission to do. You will just do. You will just perform. You will just be. And you don't need to get anyone's approval. You don't need to get anyone, any justification. You don't need to get anyone else's opinion. 
You know what you know. Like you know, like you know. And you set out on this earth with laser focus. And you're going only one way forward, no matter what. What needs to align in your character, in your skill sets, in your competencies, in your relationships, in your finances, all of that. Those are details. Those are details. Those are mere details. You can work on the details. But first of all, you need to know what you know. And you need to lock in on that. Then you can align whatever needs to be aligned. But you don't move a little, then you, you backtrack, then you go ask someone, do you think, do you see, am I really, could it be, do I have what it takes? Nah, none of that, none of that, no time for that, no time for that. We're moving forward. And the way to move forward is to get certain things, the basics, the fundamentals, the non-negotiable set. And then you take off, never looking back. And one day, so many people will be grateful that you chose to stand and do your business, that you chose to stand and you got promoted, that you chose to stand and you touched these people, that you chose to stand and you started that thing, that you chose to stand and you built that fund. They will be so grateful that you did not second guess, you did not give up, you did not divert. And the only way you can do that is when you know, like you know, like you know. And so I'm going to have a book out based on this. This has so impacted me on the 1st of January by God's grace. And I hope it will bless you and it will hit you like this has hit me. The only way I kept on yo-yoing was because there's some things I still had a question mark over myself. And if I didn't get validation outside, then I second guess. I don't need it. And now I'm just moving on. And I pray that you can find that for yourself and you can do the same. This world is waiting for us. Africa is gonna be the leading economic region in the world. And you need to be the men and women that are going to get it there. And the only way you will move anyone and anything outside of yourself is when you have certain things established within yourself. You need to know like you know like you know. And you need to hold yourself up at that altitude. And you need to move with that attitude until you finish that what you came out here to do. Thank you so much for your time today. I love you guys. The Master Plan Class. So we're starting classes this week on Thursday 17th. If you are interested, please do DM me. This is everything I've been talking about. You want to know like you know like you know that this career trajectory, this business that I'm doing, where I want to go in life, that I'm the right person at the right place, going the right way. Remove everything, shed off everything that shouldn't be going along with you. You want to do that? Plus have the goals, the strategies, the actions, have the plan to help you execute that for the next 12 months, then you need to be in the master plan class. So look for me. It is $500. You can pay it in flexible installments as long as you pay it by the 10 weeks. The master plan class is now 10 weeks. As long as you, you pay it by the time that you know the, the course is done, you can pay it online and you can pay it. I mean, there, there's so many ways to go about it. But if you're interested in the master plan class, because you want to be sure. I'm the right person at the right place um, and I want to align my skills, my competencies. I want to align my time, my investments, my wealth. I've had so many people that have just had their money going every which way out of pressure from family or trying things out and that I've learned. Now, look, wealth is a value of mine and I'm not going to play with it anymore. And they're seeing their lives shift. I mean, literally people's lives are shifting during the program. I can only imagine what's going to happen as they execute their plans. Oh, it's been amazing with you. I love you so much. I live for this. And I'm grateful that you would spare an hour of your time to do this with me. God bless you. And I will catch up with you. DM me if interested. Or go to purposefulexus.africa slash masterplan. Bye. Blessings.